Hey fellow explorers, today I am at San Jose Mineta International Airport in the San Francisco Bay Area in Northern California. And in this video, I'm gonna take you on a full tour of this airport. I'm gonna turn the camera so you can see what I can see. This airport, I'll call it the one of the smaller airports in the region, San Francisco, code letters SFO is definitely the big airport. But one of the reasons I like San Jose better flying into the San Francisco Bay Area region is the weather here is much better, and so flights are way less delayed coming in and out of San Jose. It's also in the heart of Silicon Valley, and so it's a pretty high-tech airport we're gonna take a look at. If you head out to baggage claim or ground transportation, you go out these kind of like man trap doors that look like something out of like a science fiction movie. You go through one set of doors, they open up. You go through another set of doors, these doors close, and then you go through the third doors to actually get out to baggage claim, so they don't actually have have anybody sitting there at the exit to make sure nobody comes in because nobody can come back in through those doors. That's pretty cool. The setup of this airport, it is 36 gates in total in one very long line. Uh, so I actually just came in to gate 36 on Southwest. Most of this is Terminal B, mostly Southwest over here. And then Terminal A is where you get some of the international flights and some of the other airlines as well. And the gate 30 to 36 um, Southwest, those are pretty pretty crummy part of the terminal. Actually, this terminal that we're in right now, starting at 30 in B, really quite nice. Big, tall ceilings, nice wood paneling, digital advertisements for all the tech companies. Over here on the right, this is the security, the main security checkpoint in Terminal B. They have regular security, TSA pre-check. They have clear as well. So, you know, whatever your security of choice, you can come in through it here. This is up on like the second level. So when you come in for ticketing, it's on the level below. And then this whole level of the departures is the second level of the airport. We have an outpost of Chick-fil-A if you wanna get something to eat and really pretty quite busy here. It's 11.30 on a Tuesday afternoon. And uh, that's obviously a popular snack to get before you board. Outpost of Pete's Coffee to get your uh, cafe fix. One thing you'll notice, as we go through, there are a lot of mm, self-checkout kiosks at the airport being a high-tech area, although these say don't use. I guess they're still working out the kinks on those. Here we have the Zoom Zone, a children's play space by the Children's Discovery Museum of San Jose. That's cool to let your kiddos blow off some steam before they get on their flight. And they've got these nice signs at the airport that tell you what food you might be coming up on. So within less than five minutes, we're gonna find all these very tasty things that I won't read to you because we're gonna see them later. Really popular thing to bring back from America is C's Candies to bring back home. C's Candies has been serving tasty chocolates for decades. Although I would say the kind of like San Francisco institution is probably Ghirardelli. If you're picking a chocolate to bring home, that's a pretty good one too. Uh, he, I don't, I've never eaten at Jim Stump's Tap Room and Kitchen. Uh, this is a bit more of a bar rather than just kind of a foodie thing. What are you gonna get here? Uh, sort of looks like Mexican food. We got fish tacos for $16.99, but we've also got banh mi French dip. So it's like, I'm gonna go ahead and call it California cuisine. If you haven't heard of California cuisine, that's where we just take influences from everybody else and put it all together. And there you go, you have a California cuisine restaurant. Over here at the Runway Deli. Um, I don't know, where's the Runway Deli? Looks like a Jamba Juice to me. Oh, it's a Jamba Juice that also serves sandwiches. There you go, Jamba Juice serves smoothies. Trader Vic's, this is a neat tiki themed bar over here and then they have a cool uh, kind of tiki themed seating area over here. You can get some spicy tuna bowls, tuna poke bowl, salad, macaroni salad. So, you know, Hawaiian themed, but in little like grab and go bowls you can take on the plane. And it cost you uh, $22 for the uh, poke bowl to take on your boat. Hey, we've got the Sushi Boat Japanese Restaurant. And uh, 
nice decorations in here. You can get tempura, udon, teriyaki, and rice bowls. They've got the sushi fresh made that you can take out of the grab and go, or you can order some of the things that they'll make up for you. They've got the sushi chef right here, plating those things up, keeping it nice and cold. And then the, this is like the little food court area in Terminal B, we have a Smash Burger. So if you're looking for a burger, uh, that would be my preference. I like the burgers from Smash Burger. I mean, it's not an In-N-Out Burger, uh, but it's pretty good. And there's one more Mexican spot here. Una mas. One more, please. Hudson, the classic airport gift shop, a convenience store. If you need your cool gel bamboo travel pillow before you get on the plane, you can pick that up here. Your charging bricks, your magnets, your beef jerky, anything you need to keep yourself happy for your flight coming up. One of the things I also like about flying out of San Jose Airport here, I like the rental car situation. So at both SFO and Oakland Airport, if you want to pick up a rental car, you at San Francisco, you have to take a train, like a tram to get to the rental car center. And at uh, Oakland, you have to take a bus to get to the rental car center. At San Jose Airport, the rental car center is directly ac like across the street from the airport uh, from Terminal B. If you're in Terminal A, you can either take a little bit of a hike or there's a small shuttle bus, but I generally fly southwest, which means I'm generally coming into the 30 or high 20s part of this terminal, which I just walk outside uh, one minute from baggage claim and the rental car center is there, which is super nice. And in particular, if you're like picking what rental car company to pick up, my favorite tends to be Hertz. And I like if you're a Hertz Gold Plus Rewards member, then you can just grab and go. You don't have to talk to anybody. You can reserve your car online, put your credit card in, uh, show up and just go to your car and you don't have to stand in line, uh, long lines for the rental car. You know, with sort of the, all the high tech businesses here, Google, Facebook, this and that, they want people to get in and out quickly. We've got San Jose Mac and Cheese Kitchen. If you like mac and cheese, that looks like it's fairly new. There's the Sharks Cage Sports Bar, the San Jose Sharks, the hockey team, to me, the outpost, if you need some new luggage or some fancier luggage. By the way, what am I wheeling today? Today I am pushing around my Aero Trunk suitcase right here. Uh, if you haven't seen my review of this one, I'm enjoying it. It's got this kind of like neat pocket on the front right here. Uh, so I can stick my laptop in there and not necessarily have to hump my heavy laptop on my backpack like this. But you know, these walking tours tend to be, um, you know, interesting to make because I'm taking my luggage with me. Uh, we've got these massage chairs right here. They take $1 for three minutes, $5 for a 31 minute massage. If you have a long layover and you can't make it into the lounge, you can get yourself a massage right there. All right, as we start to see the um, terminal narrow here, this is going from the B gates into the A gates. Uh, and so we're gonna, you got the signs here. It says now entering terminal A. So we're coming up on gates one to 16. The international flights are also in this direction. And I think the like, one lounge at the airport is up here too. Uh, if you've got pets and they need to relieve themselves, there's a pet relief area right here with a fire hydrant and doggy bags. And uh, the air is nice and fresh in here. It's well air conditioned. Um, it's not, it's never too busy. Like I feel like they don't pack this place too much. Uh, over here, Volaris flights go to Mexico. Uh, so yeah, where do the international flights go? We'll see as we walk through, I'll find a uh, departures board to call out some more of the international flights that are departing today. But you can indeed go to some nice international destinations or fly in from international destinations here. And if your destination is the San Francisco Bay Area, you know, um, I like this airport. We've got a flight to Guadalajara. And then right here on the right, this is the club. So this is the 
lounge at San Jose Airport. This is a priority pass lounge. So if you have priority pass access, you can get into that lounge. Uh, they also accept uh, lounge key, diners club, and British Airways guests open from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. Elevator's broken, so I guess you gotta take the stairs to go up there. There's a little uh, Bank of America ATM and a small Hudson right in front of those Volaris gates. And uh, there is a duty-free store up here. So, you know, that's the big traveling internationally, get your duty-free alcohol, cigarettes, perfumes, generally seems to be the items here. I find this place tends to be uh, open like when the international flights go and when they're not, this place is uh, not open. This is funny. <laughs> a federal court has ordered Philip Morris to state cigarette companies intentionally design cigarettes with enough nicotine to create and sustain addiction. All right, so now you know what the court has ordered Philip Morris to tell you. You know, uh, I feel like we can put as many warnings as we want on cigarettes, but uh, the people who smoke them are gonna keep smoking them. I love going to some of the countries where they put like, um, like people's mouths when they rot from cigarettes or, you know, and then like when they have them in the duty-free shops, they have to like hide them because like the pictures on the packages are like so scary that like, like you don't even want your kids to see them. Uh, here we've got Delta going to Salt Lake City at 1.30 today. We have a little tiny CNN newsstand if you need to pick up some magazines or maybe a uh, San Francisco 49ers t-shirt. There's a small outpost of Starbucks here on your right. And something coming soon behind this pillar. You will notice this A terminal is not as large as B. It is, the ceilings are much smaller. The aisleways are much smaller. So it really definitely feels like two different airports. Uh, we have Trace Gringos, a couple cantina. Uh, first class deli, Pete's Coffee. And on the right, we have the central security in Terminal A. So as you can see, if you come into Terminal A, you can walk all the way over to Terminal B. Um, come in and out either one, but if you're looking for your rental cars, uh, you'll want to walk over to about gate 27, 26, something like that. That's where the closest exit is over rental cars that you can just walk from. If you're over here, then it's a little bit of a shuttle. We have an outpost of Gordon Biersch Brewery Restaurant. You're looking to have a few drinks before your flight. Delta here is flying out to Atlanta. And I mentioned there's a lot of these like self kiosks here. So this Hudson gift shop is a kiosk where you can get uh, like expensive things. Like you can get your AirPods, you can get Disney socks, you can get San Francisco 49ers hats, and you all kind of like shop for it from this little kiosk here. AirPods Pro, $329. I have a pair of those in my backpack right now. Those are my noise canceling headphones of choice for uh, small flights, uh, short flights. Brookstone, right there. And we have a little, another author's bookstore here on the right. You can get some high flying fiction. Uh, I've seen a number of the restrooms out of order. So I think they're doing some significant remodel here where they're fixing a bunch of the restrooms. They've got um, where they used to have newspapers. Uh, and let's you know, Silicon Valley starts here. And if you want the newspaper, find it at the um, bookstore gift shop, no longer in the little vending machine. And down this way, gates one to eight, this is gonna be uh, going downhill a little bit. Like I definitely feel like the further away you get from the center of the airport, the smaller the buildings get. It's warmer here in this uh, bridge that we're going across. I like this little tech initiative thing here. This is like a, what do they call this? Like a motion sculpture. There's all these like 
the rolling ball sculpture. So there's like these little balls and they go up here and then it brings it down and then the ball goes around and down this way. This like brings out my inner child in here to just like watch these balls go ding, 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 ding. Oh, and when I said expensive screens, these are curved screens, these curved advertisements. I mean, they spent a lot of money on the advertising in here because there's a lot of, um, you know, tech company CEOs making some really fancy purchasing decisions. Got a advertisement for T-Mobile. Before that, it just said Cisco. And uh, here, let's look at the departure screen, see if we can see some more of the international flights on here. Uh, Honolulu, not international, but far away. Uh, Maui, also Hawaii, not international. So it looks like at least most of the international flights for the rest of the day go to Mexico. Um, but I know this airport used to have flights to other places. Oh, there's a second club here. Uh, so if you're flying out of these gates, you actually have two choices of your the club lounge same set of people that we saw before same lounge operator so i think you're going to find the offerings to be fairly similar the san jose beer union micro brews and brewing is pretty popular in california these are their various brews on tap beer is going to cost you somewhere between eight to eleven dollars and they've got some sandwiches pizzas avocado toast spirit airlines the yellow one I'll pass, thank you. Um, it's yellow, but uh, you know, your Spirit flight is gonna be $29, and then you're gonna find yourself paying $100 in fees uh, for your baggage or to print your boarding pass or whatever it might be. There are very few people as we go down this way at this time of day. There's a Dunkin' Donuts right here. They open at 4 a.m. and they close at two, so clearly, there are not many flights uh, remaining that leave out of this part of the airport. My guess is the other international flights, they're already gone for the day, which is why I didn't see them on that board. And then that brings us to the final gates down here. Uh, like five through one are all kind of like a little square at the end here with this Hudson. And this Hudson actually has a self checkout. You can do self checkout here you don't see that a lot at these airport shops. Uh, so if you're looking for, you know, a quiet place to get away and maybe sleep or take a nap, uh, this seems like a pretty good place to do it. Well, fellow explorers, if you enjoyed this tour of San Jose Airport and you want to see another tour, maybe of San Francisco Airport right over here, or you want to see a tour of LAX Airport, you can check those out up here or my entire airport tourist playlist. You'll find them in the description. As usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in the next video.